Hi, this is Kenneth Wong, Senior Editor for DE247. I'm visiting Autodesk Gallery in One Market Plaza in San Francisco. This is a space that showcases many of the company's research projects and experimental technologies in a tangible fashion through displays that you can interact with or objects that you can actually touch. I'm here specifically to learn more about Project Bernini. You might have seen the way generative AI programs like Midjourney and Microsoft Image Creator allows you to create 2D objects using text and image prompts. Well, Bernini is Autodesk's initiative to create a similar application that works in 3D for engineers. To tell us more, here is Mike Haley from Autodesk Research. Project Bernini is about very easily creating early stage geometry. We're not trying to create something with Bernini that is the perfect end result of a design process, but rather the early stage of design where you're trying to quickly explore lots of concepts. Maybe you have some conceptual imagery, maybe you have some verbal ideas, maybe you just have a bunch of things that you want to just quickly create some 3D shapes and get a sense of what do you really want? What's a good starting point? This is relevant for manufacturing designers trying out new kind of product concepts it's great for media designers creating game characters or movie characters or maybe just background content very very quickly so with Project Bernini, we wanted to move away from the old traditional world of CAD software where you open the CAD software and you have a blank canvas, right? We wanted to support as many natural forms of input that somebody has early on in the design process. So for example, it can accept text, so you can, much like a chat GPT, you can bring in a prompt and it will try and create a 3D model as described by the prompt. You can bring in imagery, you could bring in one or even many images of an object and it will help reconstruct even a single image, it will help reconstruct construct the 3D shapes represented in that image. You can also bring in a point cloud, something that you've perhaps scanned using a laser scanner or even a phone scanner. Or you could even bring in like a voxel grid, like the kinds of shapes you find in Minecraft, the kind of blocky shapes, and it'll help smooth them out and create an accurate 3D piece of geometry. That's what's in Bernini today. In the future, you're going to see new kinds of things coming, right? So Bernini in the future is going to be even able to do things like bring in a 3D model that's already been created, but it's got some missing pieces on it and actually be able to complete those 3D pieces for you. So it offers this pretty broad range of sort of natural ways to get started with a project. Yeah, so right now Project Bernini outputs OBJ files, which is essentially a mesh geometry. So, but inside the way shapes are actually represented inside Bernini is a very rich format that could produce a whole range of different outputs. We've decided right now to produce mesh because for the kinds of use cases of producing early shaped geometry, mesh is kind of good enough for now, but we could extend into almost any format really. So we're still trying to work out really where Bernini fits in the world, right? you know, to be honest. It does seem that it's most suited to conceptual design. So I can imagine it being a tool that is used in the very early stages of a product. Perhaps when you first bring up, you know, Fusion and you're thinking of a new product concept, maybe you're designing a set of sunglasses and you want sunglasses that look like a pineapple, right? So you come in and you say, sunglasses that look like a pineapple and it produces 10 bits of geometry that all look like pineapple sunglasses. It's giving you inspiration, right? It's giving you shapes to help start out, you know? So th th these are the kinds of things we're thinking a lot about is things that inspire people, things that actually help people be even more creative in fact and offer them more variants that maybe knock them out of ways they might have thought before and show them new ways of thinking. Because this is, this is all new to all of us and we really have to figure out how this is going to be used in the future in our products. For more on engineering related news, go to Digital Engineering 24-7. That's digitalengineering247.com. Until next time, I'm Kenneth Wong. See you later.